to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we have no comments from the assembly. Can you sign in? I don't. Did you want to, Michelle? Can you please sign in? Um, and don't get the, paper the only time? we ha aren't the uh, resolution have be done yearly. The one that's on file hasn't been updated, so I wasn't sure we were still following them. For what sign in? Yeah, our resolutions don't have to be updated yearly. I just I I don't know. I'm asking. Do we have to update that one every year? I don't know. You okay. did. You're you were talking about it, but I didn't see an update okay, on the website. Everyone, we're asking everyone to please sign in. It's not that difficult. And then I'll have the list, and we'll go through the list. Well, uh, please update on the website, please. Okay. Any okay. other comments? Yes, I have a bunch of different comments. Um, I, I know at one point we were talking about having a truck route. Uh, instead of using Twin Valley Road. Do we have any update on that? Um, my daughter actually almost got hit by two Mack trucks the other day going up to, out on Twin Valley Road on 23. Uh, I know it was mentioned, but I haven't heard anything additionally. It's been several years. They're still talking about it. There's okay. some uh, red flags because of uh, Twin Valley Road South, uh, the property to the east is an agricultural preservation, so it's difficult for us to widen that road. Okay. So. Yeah, it just... Um, I don't, I don't know what we can do, but it's really bad with the Mack trucks there. I know we had the problem with the uh, um, lights there for quite some time as well, going out from them hitting it. Um, and Mill Road by the Old Village Inn, um, has there been any discussion on making it like one way instead of people trying to pull out from Mill Road onto 23? No, I, just, I think that's an accident ready to happen. Um, it's just not a very good intersection. Um, I noticed that, I mean, and I, I might be the farmer, there's snow fences on the upper part of Mill Road, um, and I assume the farmers are doing that. There's some on Mill Road. Is that something we do? Because I know Mill Road by Nisley Feed is horrible when we have snow with drifting. Is there any way that we can look at, like, putting snow fences there? Because I think accident-wise, I think it would be more accident than the time it would take to just put a snow fence there. I put all the other snow fences on. Yeah. Could we look at putting one right, like the field, like basically right across from um, Mill Stream, faces the worst part, I think. Look at by Miss Lee. Well, there is 300 feet there. I, I put up what I had. Yeah. For next year, I can certainly Mill add Road is the cleanest road in this township. Why? Mill Road is the cleanest road in this township. I, I, the trucks I, all have to go back to the maintenance. I know. To get yeah. It, it, it gets bad, so bad really fast. Extra money on, on fence. We have up to five trucks, five, six trucks out there, and every time they come back, they put their plow down because they know it drifts. Okay. I'm just saying it's an accident waiting to happen. Um, it, it it gets bad very fast there. Um, that one Friday, we had all the drifting. It was a really bad accident in Churchtown. That was actually one of the worst spots I had that and when I got into Churchtown. And I went all the way, you know, down 23. Um, I, I actually requested the open projects, and there was a wind stream project. I guess it's been out there for years. Um, so I guess that's probably almost a dead thing, but I remember there being a service electric project next to Taco Bell, next to CF Farms, and I don't remember ever hearing anything else about it. They were going to do a little substation. Yeah, I recall too, but I don't know of any Yeah. Is there anybody can find out what happened? The plans were approved. They put um, permit applications in, so we're just waiting to finalize the permit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why wouldn't that be on... Like that report, so I'm a little confused. That's land development plans that haven't been approved. Okay, so what am I supposed to be asking for when there's projects? I was trying to get a list of projects that you know have been approved but not done yet. How do I? What do I ask for? How do we know? We don't address it until it comes before us. So. Yeah, I know, but I mean, I'm trying to ask as right to know wise. How do I ask it correctly so I can obtain the right well, information? If it hasn't happened yet. There's no right to know. Well, the was, plans were approved, <clears throat> that is right to know, right? Yeah, but a permit that's in process, that's not available for right to know. So okay. Permits that are approved. So if you want to know about permits that are approved for that particular project, you certainly may have. Okay. Well, I, I thought you said plans. They were just permits. So what's the difference between the permit and the plans? I'm sorry. What's, what's the difference between the permit and the plans? I guess I'm confused. Eric, I don't know. Someone elaborate. Land development plan gets approved. 
approved by the Board of Supervisors, applications for permits come in and are administratively processed and issued by uh, whichever okay. official is uh, in charge, whether it's okay. zoning, building, etc. Yeah, I, I really thought that we, I saw plans at one point or drawings. That's why I was very confused. And then I have uh, a whole big discussion on recording minutes, the, the, um, uh, the resolution for recording the uh, um, proceedings. I have a lot of different questions in reference to that as well. So you may continue or you want to do other sure, stuff first. Ahead. Okay. All right. Well, first off, um, you reference the Sunshine Law. I'm thinking you should actually reference the actual statute or actual act number so that it's clear. Um, all right, such as, um, okay. All right, well, the date on here has to change. Um, on number one, it says, any individual desiring to record a public meeting shall notify the chairperson. Does shall, in that assume is mandatory. And by the law, I don't. It says that I don't really have to let anybody know that I'm okay. recording. Well, how about we do? We'll continue this discussion later. Okay. We're going to go through this, and we'll decide. And then, if we're going to vote on it, we'll ask if there's any questions. Okay. Well, there's. Okay. I I have probably about seven questions on it. Anything else? No. Okay. All right. So you have your correspondence in front of you. We have resolution 2022-16, attending a public meeting to record, pro record proceedings. Have you guys looked over that? Do you have time to go over it? Yes? Okay. So, do you, would you like more time also? And we can push this, so we just go Okay, so we'll table this until the next time. Keep it on the agenda and then roll it over. Okay, second we have planner for approval. So we, have, we have a planner here that was uh, requested. I guess he went to planning because we had suggestions from the audience, from the citizens that they thought a plan would be a good idea. So planning interviewed some and then they recommended one. We have the planner here tonight to go over information for us so we can make a decision. Yeah. Very nice. I am Tom Kamita. I'm, I'm a town planner and landscape architect from Westchester, PA. Um, thanks for inviting me. Um, I was during the first part of this admiring the uh, banners on the wall and looking at the surnames that look like um, several people had relatives that are on the wall. My dad served in World War II. Um, so, just a, a little thumbnail about myself and my company. So, um, for the last 49 years, I've uh, worked as a municipal planning consultant, uh, starting in 1973. Currently, our firm, Thomas Quinn Associates, represents 23 municipalities in Pennsylvania. And most of them are townships like Carnarvon. We do work for some boroughs and um, some cities and so forth, but most of our municipal clients are townships. And um, in the 49 years that I've worked, I've assisted 133 municipalities. So at the planning commission meeting, I mentioned that I would consider myself a resource to the supervisors. And um, you know, I learned a lot at the planning commission meeting. I wasn't exactly sure you know, what particular issue was or is but um, as we went through the meeting it seemed to me that the threshold question was should the Morgantown Airport property stay zoned the way it is or perhaps be rezoned for residential so I've had about a month to think about that and I had you know a couple of overarching takeaways I wanted to just mention uh, one, I'll call mm -hmm. governing documents. Um, second, I'll call the approach that the equitable owner has taken. And then third, I'll talk about the analysis that the board would consider. So first, on the governing documents, you know it better than I, but we know it's not zoned for residential. It's zoned for non-residential. 
And in fact, the more recent comprehensive plan calls out the property for non-residential. So, you know, the first partial hill to climb is to ask ourselves the question, well, is it zoned correctly as non-residential? And what was the thinking of the township and the regional comp plan to designate the property non-residential? So those are things that you know about, I don't know about, but for the new kid on the block, that, that's what I look at. Um, the second is the approach, and Eric could tell you, but in section 606 of the municipality's planning code, it's the enabling legislation for overlay districts. And so Berks Home steps up, they perhaps are the equitable owner. Uh, they advance a plan that Bob User prepared, and uh, Joan sent it to me. Uh, you know, it's a cut above most of the conventional plans, but um, Bob User has prepared plans in many of the municipalities where I've worked. And you know, he knows the drill, he's worked for many years. But the approach is an overlay district. So what is an overlay district? I mean, when municipalities planning code was adopted, it allowed floodplain overlay, steep slopes, airport noise, all kinds of interchange overlay districts and so forth. But the question I think you'd have to ask is, does this proposition in front of you rise to the level of a legitimate overlay district? And it's probably something that we would want or to comment on. But in my experience, what every developer calls their thing when it's not zoned is an overlay district. It's like the, the <coughs> term of, you know, of the day. And so you have to go through section 606 and say, what subsection, Your Honor, are we relying on as the authority to create an overlay district? Is it there or is it made up? And that's that's a question, it's a legitimate question. Um, in terms of the analysis, what I said the last time as different planning commission members asked me a question, is I'm a town planner and landscape architect. I have a boatload of experience in planning and zoning, uh, public participation and so forth, but I'm not a realtor and I'm not a developer. So I said, maybe what we would do is get a panel of experts in this room, and one of them would be a residential developer. And I, I don't know if I mentioned Jason Duckworth's name from Arcadia Land, but uh, at one point they were doing something in New Morgan Borough, when at the time I was the planning consultant to the borough when they first annexed the property from half of your township. Uh, I was the first planner for New Morgan Borough. Um, and so then I thought of who else could be in the room that wouldn't have skin in the game where they would have a commercial or an industrial bent. And then these three experts were like available to us to ask questions, um, some of which might be highest and best use or it could be this or it could be that. But since the Planning Commission meeting on behalf of Concord Township, Delaware County, we're facing an issue just like you are. And the chairman of the supervisors said to me at the Christmas dinner, um, if I had my druthers, it would just be a self-storage facility. There would be no traffic, no kids, no heartburn with the use. Uh, it would be uh, taxable or tax rateable and so forth. And there's a site on Route 202, Concord Township, just before you get to the state of Delaware, where a, a property owner wants to put in residential, it's zone non-residential, and there's a sort of discernment process going on. Should they change the zoning or should they not change the zoning? Um, if the panel isn't an idea about which you're comfortable, the other thought I had, and I've, I've done this several times, is uh, Westchester University Department of Geography and Planning. Dr. Dorothy Ives Dewey, who used to work in our office for 10 years, is the chairperson. And whenever I get involved in fiscal impact analyses, I hire Dr. Dewey as my consultant, or I suggest to the municipality, you hire Westchester University. And I say to Dottie, okay, 
It could be residential or it could be non-residential. Run the numbers to say what is the tax impact, the school generation impact, uh, any impacts that would be involved, and identify the pluses and the minuses and so forth. Uh, that might be data that you would use to say yes or no to a zoning change. But um, what I said to the Planning Commission, if you're not sure, don't do anything. Just leave it the way it is. Um, if there's something dynamic and magical about the plan that you think is really good for the township, then you know, maybe advance the discussion for uh, you know, residential. But um, I mentioned to the Planning Commission a project on which I personally got schnookered here in Canarva Township. It was 1993, and I was hired as a mediator by Art Levin Jr., attorney in Pottstown, to come up with an alternative plan for Penwood. And so Bursich Associates did an R4 district conventional cul-de-sac plan. Um, it was denied. The Carnarvon supervisors denied the plan. Harvey and Mary Jane Stoltzfus hired Art Levin Jr. Um, to, and they appealed it. And before it went to court, um, they asked, could I interview the supervisors to find out what they wanted, uh, what did they not like about the original plan, and what would they like better? Well, the plan that I did was like an Eagle View type plan. It had streets and alleys, and it had mixed use. And in 1991, I did the ordinance amendments for Eagle View uh, on behalf of Euclid Township while I was doing the cover-to-cover -cover amendments of, of, of the zoning ordinance. And so um, I learned at the Planning Commission meeting a month ago that there, there were concerns about the way vehicles were stacked all over the place, which we try to mediate um, by having the alleys just like they have at Eagle View. But um, somehow, even though I thought the plan was approved as a court-ordered stipulation of settlement, it must not have been. And Burke's home bought the property and did what's been built there today. And so um, you would have to have like an ironclad development agreement so there was no bait and switch and Eric would help you with that if you decided to go residential. But um, one of the comments made at the Planning Commission meeting was whether we like it or not, whoever devised the zoning scheme 30, 40 years ago and the zoning districts as shown on the map had some good intuition about the balance of the districts. And that person who spoke, who's sitting where Paul's sitting right now, said that, you know, it might have been serendipity that somebody got it right when they kind of came out of the gate and did the zoning map. But the reason I bring it up is that if you're leaning toward considering changing to residential, the question is, what's around it? And what would be either the domino effect, where other people would want to enjoy the same amendment, or not, you know, where you would say, no, we, we don't even want to go there. We're not even going to start the domino effect. The problem is COVID. Right now, the development industry is nervous about non-residential. The mom and pop store, forget about it. We all know that CVS and Rite Aid and Bed Bath & Beyond are closing half of their stores nationally because they overbuilt and people are buying more um, you know, online and so forth. So if any of us own the land, we would wonder if we're going to do non-residential, what's the lowest risk where none of us would do something that would be, you would hope that customers would come. And that's why having a non-residential zoning that would allow, I know office market is soft, but some kind of light industry or industry or so forth would, would actually um, relieve you of the headaches that you might have when you're thinking about changing the zoning to residential. And, and my last comment would be, Go back to the well and ask yourself the question, why is it currently zoned that way? 
And why does the comprehensive plan of recent vintage say non-residential? Um, now, having said all that, don't take on the cost to figure out the answers. Go to Burke's home and say, look, we're concerned about traffic. We're concerned about taxes. We're concerned about school age children. We're concerned about all these things. Bring it. You hire the experts. Why don't you get people who are not going to compromise their answers and tell us what the effects would be? Just because you have an idea of an overlay district with a plan, I'm not convinced, I'm pretending I'm you, I'm not convinced that I can say yes or no because I don't have enough information. So the other thought would be, you're in the driver's seat, you can easily just stand pat the way you are. But if I were in your seat, I would say, let the applicant who's asking for the change provide all of the answers or answer all of the questions that you have and only then make a decision. So um, anyway, um, I, I am pleased to help in any way, shape, or form, however big, however little. I do this all the time. I love it. I said at the Planning Commission meeting, um, you know, when I testify as an expert witness this year, I say I have 98 years experience, 49 during the day and 49 at night because I'm out every night all the time, 49 years. And the good news is I know how to navigate through these sort of uncharted waters. So I, I'm pleased to be able to, if I can help, help you in any way possible. changing what's over there, we can't undo what we do. I don't think it would be outrageous for us to move forward with a planner to get ideas to make sure we're going in the right direction. I mean, once it's done, it's done. There's no going back and changing it. So that invests us a little bit of money into a planner to review this <coughs> and get options I don't think it's how much out of money, line. How much money is it? Well, it was no more than what was in the eight, last quote. Eight thousand. Eight thousand. Compared to something we can't undo if we vote and <coughs> go with the home. Yeah, and if it takes less, I mean, we I just keep track of the time. If it costs less, then I don't have any invoice for whatever the lesser amount is. So the planning commission reviewed you and, and how many others? How many were at the planning? Two, two planners? And how did they choose upon these two planners? Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I was just invited. Um, I don't know how you got my name, and I'm pleased to be here, but um, I'm glad that you. So basically, the planners spoke at the. So they spoke at the planning commission meeting to the, to the whole board and whoever was in the room, I don't know all the names, but, um, <clears throat> and they were asked the same questions, just like, you know, any good interview, they were asked all the same questions, um, one to the next, and based on their, you know, based on their answers and their knowledge of the answers is, is how the, the board, and I can't speak for the whole board, but I think I can speak reasonably that, uh, based on his his answers and the confidence of his answers and the, the quickness of the answers, that's how they came up with. Him. And he came very well prepared with plans for you know the township and and what was, what is. He was very well prepared when he showed up. And you said you, I, I, I remember your name, I think, from Penwood back in the day, but not, you did nothing with Penwood? Not not what was built. You mentioned Eagleville. Do you know Eagleville? 
Yeah, so, so I, I. That was your design? Is that what I'm asking? Uh, no, actually, I wrote the ordinance. Bob Hank and, and Jim Fuller and um, some people that are no longer at Hank and, uh, were involved in the design of it. But, but uh, it was interactive. So they did sketch plans and submitted them to Euclid Township. And then we started drafting ordinances and worked with their attorney, Denise Yarnoff of Riley Riper. Which Eagleville is mixed residential, correct? Yeah. I mean, the IOP district, I wasn't on the board when that happened, but I think the IOP was kind of put in place. Have you ever heard of IOP? Most, most municipalities don't even recognize IOP. I think uh, it was kind of thrown in there around the same time. Were you on the board when that happened? It was put in a long time. Well, when you, did, when you had Walmart, I think they put the IOP in but, there just to kind of cover a wide variety of, of stuff. Other, um, other, other townships have the IOP. They just don't call it IOP. Right. Well, I mean, IOP is kind of not really... They don't really, it's, right. it's a wide variety kind of thing. Um, I mean, we all kind of grew up here and we never really expected this airport to even, you know, you know run the risk of, of going away. Um, I know that when Vernon, or when Byler came in here with the whole idea with the whole industrial warehouse, a lot of people from Highcroft were very upset about that. And I think that he saw that and retracted it. And other people had said that, you know, if you come in with a development, the people would be okay with that. Well, now here we go. We got a development, but it seems like our planning commission has a problem with it. I'm okay with the well, development. I, I, I'm not going to hide the fact that I'm okay right. with the development. I mean, that's just something, something very that, simple. That's the whole that, point of a planner. That if I'm not okay with it, you're okay with it. But I think for the whole township, we should spend that money and have someone come in and give us all the information. Because if we make the wrong decision, we can't change it. If we didn't at least get advice from someone, at least well, I get that. If you have it. property budding up to us, so of course you're not going to be for it. I wasn't well, for. I wasn't for it. You don't think I'm going to make money off of it if they put homes out there? And it's not about me making money. It's about doing what's right for the township. And I feel traffic you can't undo. But it goes beyond that. That's why we should hire a planner. So you're going to more traffic us. with industrial but, commercial than you will with residential. But once again, if instead of us just being up here. We have a planner that comes up with ideas, brings it to the township, and then we can decide from there. I'd rather discuss with Scott Anderson, because I don't know if Kraft has a planning part in theirs either, to get some uh, different ideas. I mean, no offense to you, but if I hire a wedding planner, the wedding planner's going to do what I want him to do anyway. So I don't know what conversation took place at planning commission. So uh, yeah, I'm not going to move forward with a planner as of right now until we talk to Scott. Just so it makes you feel better, we have clients north of Pittsburgh, State College, um, Ferguson Township, and so forth. So we're we're um, we're all over the place. So I don't well, doubt that. Pardon me. I don't doubt that. Yeah, yeah. I, I was just saying. Um, you know, I I worked in Berks County before, and um, in 1994, I did the master plan for historic uh, Joanna Furnace. So I'm also a landscape architect. I've designed over 50 parks and I've designed a lot of neighborhoods. So when I see plans, I understand them because I know what it takes to build them. So anyway, but if you're the boss. Uh, if you don't want to hire a planner, um, just think about what the thresholds are that would lead you to make an informed decision. And um, Figure that out. Work with Earth about it. Um, you know, you can do whatever you want. I, I'm just here as a friend. I'm just saying, if you need some help, I am not aware of any other human being who's still working, who works for 23 municipalities. They don't exist. They're either passed away or they're retired many years ago. And so the advantage of Thomas Commit Associates is that we do this all of the time. We're the expert witness for many of the attorneys when they're in trouble, when there's a curative amendment or a validity challenge or something that's a hot potato. But you're the boss, and I'm just here as a friend. As a matter of fact, I should leave, so if you want to deliberate and, and not feel like you're hurting my feelings, then you can just have at it. If, any, if anybody has any questions, um, 
you know, I'd be happy to stay, but if you feel more comfortable, I could just leave. So what do you say? You don't want to vote until you talk to Scott? Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to spend $8,000 until we kind of explore our options and the board explores options. I mean, if Scott and okay. Kraft, if they have a planner there, he works for the township right now. Let's ask him. So if you want to do, yeah. check with Scott first, and All right, then we'll come back to also, this. Also, I do need to burn home. Keep an eye on it. He did give us a lot of stuff you said to about taxes and all that. But if it do's and don'ts and stuff like that, did you see them? Okay. Okay, so. And I think they're on the agenda for the next meeting as well, so. Well, we can push first to March because we want to meet with Scott then and discuss it in February. I'm not saying no to that, but I would like to meet Scott. Okay, so we'll do, we'll push Scott to the February meeting. And then if anything comes up, if it doesn't, or we'll, however we vote, then we push back to March. I'm okay with that. See what Scott's on board with us already. Let's see what he has to offer at, at what price. Okay, so we'll come back to this for the February meeting to make a decision or yeah, and I, at least talk to Scott and it might be pushed off the March meeting. To vote. Sure, and, and I, I also said this at the planning commission meeting, keep Scott, he's your guy, keep doing it. If you want a specialized consultant for this or the next top of day next year, I'm available. Okay. Yeah, I'm not trying to replace anyone, I'm just trying to say I might be able to help, but if I can't, right. that's the way it's it goes. Right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, payroll transfer. That's just information showing the transfer that we have. That's the one we approved last meeting. Actually, this well, yeah, that's the one we're going to do monthly. Every payroll, every payroll will be a transfer. Money is never deposited into the payroll. It goes into the general savings. So the prior treasurer would do transfers every payroll. But that was just now. We have, when so what meetings do we want to approve these at the regular meeting? Well, I mean, I guess you want approval at this meeting for next month already. We don't really know exactly how much payroll will be. Okay, so we should process. wait this regular. So is it okay that we continue sending reports to the board, payroll is processed, here's what the net is, here's what taxes come to, and then you can ratify it at the next meeting or something like that. Is that acceptable? Yes, I mean, because before we weren't even, I mean, they were just doing the transfer. So. I would think that's yeah. okay. We would like to keep the board informed on how payroll So we were informed before. She's saying she well, wants to keep us informed each well, month. Well, that's why I was kind of curious because we never had to no. approve before. Because we just did the transfer. But we should. I, I, I'm with whatever works to not hold things up is yeah. what we do. I mean, I don't know if that makes sense, but, you know. So then she'll do a report and let us know that this is what needs to be ratified for next meeting that's going to be transferred to cover the payroll. Okay. So, yes. So. Keep us up to date, mm -hmm. and then we'll ratify the meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay. So for this one, then I gave you a copy of last week's pay, and so now would be the time then to, to ratify the fifty thousand dollars that was transferred. So that's what we're asking for tonight. Okay. So I need a motion to. I'll make a motion to accept that. Second. Motion to second. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Okay. So then. We have new checking account forms that need signed tonight. And that is for the rescue funds. So we're setting up a separate account so the fund is just coming out of that account. It'll be easier to track everything. We will sign stuff tonight at the meeting. Premium pay resolution 2219. So we had discussed about the premium pay for full-time and part-time that were in during the pandemic. Now, are there changes to this or what, what are we doing as far as voting on this area? Are there changes based on your direction given at the last meeting? I updated it to align with the final rule issued by the federal government, which has just come out right before your, your last meeting. So the changes are now you'll see reference to the final rule as opposed to the interim rule, uh, beginning at the fourth whereas clause. And we've then clarified that 
certain employees require written justification for the premium pay. The focus of the final rule and the whole program itself is to focus premium pay or bonus pay to low-wage workers. And so there are certain restrictions on workers at the higher end of the spectrum. And as such, if you're going to issue a premium pay to a high-wage earner, there needs to be written justification submitted to the Department of Labor. And so there's a new paragraph in there authorizing the written justification to be made. For your sake, the only high earner who is not eligible for overtime who's on the list would be Jones. Everybody else does not need written justification. They are, all the police officers are overtime eligible, so they qualify. Or they're low-wage earners or part-time seasonal, and they qualify without any written justification. The department says the written justifications are liberally granted, so I don't expect that there would be a problem. The key is that even the high earner would need to have shown coming in personally working during the pandemic. Joan did that by administering meetings in person so the government could continue to function. And so she was a first, you know, essential worker on the first line, just as officers and low-wage earners were. So that's what the significant change is. The be it resolved part is generally the same. So number one, it says essential workers eligible to receive premium pay funded by ARP funds shall be those employees who, after March 3rd, 2021, actually performed at least 40 hours of essential work. Then defines regular in-person interactions or regular physical handling of items that were also handled by others, but excluding employees who work remotely or engaged in telework. Two, to the extent a worker's pay is not below the wage threshold, we then identify them as being subject to written justification, and you'll authorize that the written justification can be submitted to the Department of Labor. Three, full-time workers' premium pay shall be calculated at $13 per hour for up to a maximum of 40 hours of work. So that would be your max, 13 times 40. And then for part-timers, you ask that it be reduced in half, so it's $7.50 per hour for up to 40 hours of work. If somebody was part-time and didn't work 40 hours during that window, then they wouldn't get all 40 hours of pay. So that would be your maximum, 13 times 40 at $7.50 times 40 for part-timers. It says premium pay shall be included in the next payroll process by the township. And then six, the foregoing premium pay shall serve as a one-time payment to eligible employees, not used to offset or fund any employee's salary or wages, such as contractual wage increases that the police are already entitled to. You can't, like, offset it and just use the federal funds to save yourself money. It has to be in addition to. So that's what number six says. So that's consistent with the direction that you gave two weeks ago, I guess. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And then Joan prepared the list of employees that would be attached as Exhibit A. Okay, so we can... It's like we discussed that everybody's getting the same, every full-time is getting the same amount, right? Correct, correct. And they're all eligible except for Joan, is that... She needs written justification. Right. She would need a written justification. Who does that written justification? Good question. Joan, do you know who is authorized to go into the portal? And maybe not even that far yet. Someone's got to physically go into a federal website portal and enter the information. Probably shouldn't be Joan, so it might be the board chair. The resolution simply authorizes the township to make the submission. So we can discuss that. A lot of the reporting regulations are still pending, so we don't have the guidance yet on how to report these things. And again, that's why we didn't quite try to create the written justification in the resolution, because in time there might be forms of justifications generated or given that we could then just use as part of the process. But we'll need to go into a portal. Well, I'm okay with it as presented. I'll make a motion to accept the resolution 2022-19. Second. Motion is second. All those in favor? Aye. I abstain. Thank you. Thank you.
How much money is in that account? About 180. Oh, I see. Okay. That's how I look at it. So then what do we do? What we did was he took Keith's name off so he doesn't put on for his own bonus. He can then vote now on the remaining list if he wants. I changed from that stage to an I. If you want to give him the bonus, the Board of Auditors would be the only entity authorized to make a payment to the supervisor. So they would need to reconvene a meeting to authorize uh, part-time supervisor employees bonus, which can be done. On that point, uh, the federal regulations that were just issued requires the township as a receiver of these funds to have a conflict of interest policy. You have one in your personnel uh, handbook that applies to employees. It would be my recommendation that we just establish and approve a standalone conflict of interest policy, essentially that tracks your ethics act so you can't vote on uh, funds that would come to you and so that we have that of record in case the federal government very remote event ever comes looking to confirm that we have that policy. So if there's no, no objection, I'll prepare that quick yeah. resolution for next year. If time. we don't use the money, it'll come back to you? Yes. You have years to use it. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I want to find that yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we, only, we only got a chunk of it. We're still getting how much next year, right? You'll get 218 again. We'll get it in July for yeah. this year. Yeah. And then that's it. Okay. Okay, expenditures for approval, HVAC unit for park internet resolution 2221. So yeah. these are, we looked over, we approved these last time. Uh, the Pen Teledata, but now it's official in the resolutions, so we can track. So we need approval for the resolution. Yeah, the guy, well, he provided the estimate, so he would like to proceed with that for the library. So I included that on this resolution. Okay. Second. Motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Resolution 2220 Water Authority Board Appointment. Before we go there, mm -hmm. um, I came up with a list as far as the expenditures from the, the rescue fund. Mm -hmm. I'd like to make a recommendation. Okay. We include um, donation to the fire department, the ambulance department, and the uh, water department, the water authority, sewer authority. Since they all worked through COVID, I think they're, they should be recognized and, and we should give them a donation, whatever we decide on the amount, it's up to you guys. But I'm thinking we should do that to recognize them since the money is federal money and that would sure help them. Okay, do you want to think about that and come up with some figures to put forward for next time? Or I guess legally that would be fine, right? Well, yeah, they were officially I'm supposed to submit lists showing where the parts How do we, yeah, and how do we, my question is legally is it okay and how do we break it down? Individuals, because you're talking we're about we're not doing individuals, not individuals. go to the group, so just as our department has an entity. Yeah, but you want to do it from 500 to okay. ambulance, 500 to you know, whatever, right? Okay, All right. Is there a list of what we can and cannot use it for? Yes, it keeps changing, it changes, it changes, it changes. Right. It changes. It's, changes. it's opening up. Okay, and who has this list? Well, we have yeah. a general report from PSAT, they always try to give us a summary because to get through the federal treasury's 900 pages plus document, they said soon the federal treasury is going to get that to the point where it's easy for us to read, but it's not available right now. But I can double check on donations to those emergency services because the prior ruling was it had to be justified. Anything spent after March 31st of this past year, 2021, you could help offset some of those costs but a flat donation amount i'll have to verify yeah i, I think to keep the process moving keith why don't you make a motion like you can under act 65 now make a motion to authorize staff to follow up with each of those three agencies and consult the federal law and give you a report in two weeks on on what can be done and how it can be done so it's on the agenda then too. i'd like to make okay. that oh, 
out to the vendor and look about an extended warranty on some of that emission system on that truck. 
Um, that is the proverbial black sheep across the board of, of, of the trucking industry. I'd like just like to hear what they tell me on an extended warning on that cost. I, I know other townships have spent fifteen to twenty thousand in repairs. So I would like to entertain at least a, a, a cost on an extended warning. That's a good idea because we uh, we have a brand new freight liner in our company right now and we're having a lot of issues with it. So Okay, so get that together for us. Do, do you have any procedure not procedure but procedure where you take once a week you take your trucks up one seventy six and just let them open them up some? So they're not fucking around at 25 mile an hour because well, that's that is more detrimental than anything you could possibly do. It's it's <laughs> it's not if it's pushing snow and spreading loaded. Right. So right. Yes. I, I don't. I know that it's a procedure. They they go to the quarry. They go places, and when they're in the winter time, they're they're loaded. They're pushing. The, so they get out on the road. And, and they're running for eight ten hours. I mean, they're running for several hours. So it's not like they're just fired up and put it down here and stop. That's why I lifted away with the diesel pickup thing because that was killing. Me. Yeah, that's the worst thing you can do. The, the bigger trucks, were, they, they just by nature when we get them out this time of year, they run or they use them. You know, I feel like they're getting exercise this time of year. And in, the right. in the summertime, if, if we're using them, we're working on them, we're setting them to the quarry, they're hauling stuff. They're, they're at least they're getting run, so they don't get that proverbial hop and jumping from yeah. spot to spot. Okay. Anything else to add on that? I, I just want to, I, I think that would be a good idea, and I, I'm going to get a price on that. Okay. Put with your finance. Data Spar Tree Service quote. They have a quote in front of you for seventeen fifty. So the quote you approved last time was for the dead and diseased trees at the library. These are the dead ones standing in the open space in Penn. And there's five of them. There's now. Make a motion to we're not we're, we're not cleaning any of that up. It's all on open okay, space. It's in backyards. It was just to secure okay. the hazard by dropping. I'll second motion. that. And a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. But I want to reiterate though. As long as they're dead in the danger, if they're not, I don't want to trim everybody's tree. Yeah. No. No. These are dead. That's fine. Fire alarm system maintenance plan. I have one quote, but I'm getting another, so so we're, we're gonna. gonna Hold off, you're just working on that. Draft IOP amendment. No update, that's just a change. Police traffic services grant. Is there anything on it? Well, you have the agreement. I just need authorization as to who the board wants to sign. I need Joan to sign as the fiscal officer, but I need that either authorize Joan as the elected official or chairperson. Sign. Chairperson has always done that. Or the liaison. Or in the end. So what is that? That is for us to get back involved with the uh, traffic safety people in uh, North Central Highway Safety Network who provide us with grant money uh, towards DUI enforcement, traffic safety initiatives, okay. uh, other programs and stuff like that, seatbelt. That's just for this year, right? The, this is open-ended, I mean. So we should probably have it chaired because your liaisons could change for next year. Your liaisons may not even be here for next year. The chair is still held accountable. I'll have a problem with that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I'll get it finalized and get the same thing. Okay, so do we need an official motion on that? Or to approve it, yes. Okay. I'll make a motion to second. second. Motion, second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Okay, keeping of animals ordinance. Anybody ready to approve this or make a motion to not approve it? Or? That's been going I mean, over we for two over years it. now. We had our last of the shark sugar analysis, snow leopards. I'll make a motion to approve it. No, I'll second. Well, yeah, if you want, if you want to proceed, the next step would be to advertise it. Okay, so. You only advertise it if there's no okay, so desire for your end. 
motion to advertise the way it is. It is. Well, that's what we have to define it. 
a little bit. Well, residential, but then you also run into agriculture too, because if you have certain weeds, that can affect the alfalfa That's too. But saying. you can't spot. You know what I mean? You can't uh, spot zone. You can't spot anything. Right. You can't just point one person out. Yeah, we need to work on this. All right, Hybrid Township Road Maintenance Agreement draft. I think we need a little bit more time on this after you just getting stuff from uh, okay. Scott today. So, uh, the push is called yes. schedule. Okay. And PSAS conference attendance. So, PSAS is when, Jim? When's that start? Oh. Uh, 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 usually it's in May. Okay. So. so April. April, May, April. well, it, late April, early May. Yeah, this doesn't show the date, but the registration started, I think, about a week ago. And January 11th. Yeah. That's when the registration. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, so that's for your information. That if you are looking to attend, and you need Joan for like the supervisor, I mean, I think road crew and the police will take care of their own. But I mean, if you guys need signed up for something, then see I'd Joan. Like to go to Troop 37 request for a proposal. But to back up real quick, yeah. Keith, you said you'd like to go to that. Yeah. You have to make sure that you sign up for either supervisor or road crew because they're two different, or well, or you have to sign up for all the different classes. Well, yeah, my concern obviously is the supervisor. So I'm just saying, so yeah. you don't, don't get blindsided with that. Okay. I found the brochure April 24th to 27th. As soon as you register it better, I think it might be a discount right now. Okay. So. I stopped that tomorrow. Sounds good. Okay, do we have someone here from this for the troop or no? I don't think so. No. Okay, so where does this leave us? I mean they want they're planning on coming to your February eighth. Okay, now if, I remember. If you would like a presentation. Well, yeah, today. because this once again, this should probably go to Park and Rec. Well, if they want to do this during the carnival, we can do this during the carnival. But I mean, that's right, and that's why I said when I seen this, I said, well, they got to go past the carnival and MAA because you know their ball games, Park and Rec. So this should actually probably be directed towards Park and Rec, so they can review it, see what they want, and then the carnival because. We can't get any food for anything unless everyone else says it's free. So. I would agree. Right? We reach out to the Boy Scouts every year, don't we? I mean, the first couple of years they helped out with directed traffic, but uh, we haven't gotten a lot of response from them. Uh, what are they asking to do now? Year. I don't know that. Remember the girl that came here, the one from the food bank? I don't know if you pay attention to social media or not, but I guess she. Uh, a van had drove through Penwood development and was picking up food. A lot of people got upset about it. Um, they wanted to know where she was at. Why wasn't she the one picking the food up? Um, yeah, I guess Boy Scouts have changed a lot now. Well, she was driving the car, the <laughs> but yeah. No, but yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I, I was a Boy Scout. Okay? Yeah. To, get, to get your Eagle Scout, there's yeah. certain steps you gotta follow, and that right there is not, that's I'm not sorry, cool. that's not how you get your Eagle Scout badge. Okay, but this is Troop 37. They want to hold a carnival mm -hmm. on our grounds. That's what this is about. They're hosting four spring carnivals and they'd like to use one here. But so that's again, the generating that's income. Whatever happened to the Boy Scouts coming out and doing a cleanup? I thought that was what you did wrong. Well, if he's coming to the next meeting, I'll make a suggestion that he can have a table at the carnival and that'd be the same thing. I mean, he could do recruitment at that time. What do you mean recruitment? To set up a table, that's what it's looking like. I think we should pass, district. not not saying no to that, but I still think we should send this through Parks and Rec. Here. Oh, I thought they wanted to actually have a carnival on our grounds and hold. Yeah. It, well, to me, it says at these events we would like there to be. To me, they're asking for us to provide. Yeah, the membership committee is looking okay. to host four spring carnivals in support of spring. All right. Now, I'm not putting on a carnival for the Boy Scouts, but they can attend this and have a booth. I mean, like you guys agree. Okay, so like we'll in community 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 community. Parks, so. All right, then we'll wait till that. Yeah, they right. can clean up fireworks for us for that. Absolutely. Absolutely. That, that's a bad one. <laughs> Girl Scouts have done it. Mm -hmm. They have. Okay, so we'll hold off on sending this to Park and Rec until we decide what they actually want, and then it might just go to Carnival Committee. Sounds like it. Okay. And then 
Township intern update. Oh, okay. So uh, Brooke, who was a great intern, um, it's, it, it was one semester. So they have another student who is available, and she can train him because it's hard for me to train so many after so many weeks, you know. And she's willing to train him. Okay. Um, but it's really mostly for them. It's like a career opportunity, you know, to get to learn how to do things in an office. So basically, the intern can't stay more than their and a half weeks of service on it. Okay. Right. Yeah. So his name is Chase. Um, and I mean, everyone's fine with the intern training. That, you know, well, I mean, I get the fact that we're doing interns, but I mean, is this something that you need to get somebody part time in there to help out? I think because in do. all in all honesty, when you have interns, you're going to spend more time training them. Right. And how are you actually getting anything done? How are they helping you when you're doing more training? And now you lost one, and you got to bring another one in. Well, I so think we were kind of we were kind of waiting until we saw what was available for funds, what we can use them for before she goes and jumps in and you know wants to hire someone. Um, but right now, I mean, if we can get through one more intern and then decide. That's a quarter, right? If that's so one month or three months. Month. This intern that we had is really good. I think yeah, she had about three months. Trained him three months. months. So we'll, if we do it one more we'll time, we'll have someone for three months. Right, and then we'll have we'll see where we're at. Yeah, that makes sense. She was yeah, she was great. But, you know, she obviously had a point where they're planning the future, college or whatever. Um, right, and then that that'll give us more time, you know, for you to get the accounting under control because yeah. this is all new. Yeah. So we're still working on that, and then to have someone full time come in and then try to train them while she's still trying to be trained. Yeah, you might as well just call them their job shadowing. That's pretty much what they're doing. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're not but really. But it's, it's helpful. I mean, but if they can file stuff and answer phones and take it out, it's mm -hmm. still a help. Because when she brings someone in here to work and we're going to pay them, we're going to want her to put full time into telling them exactly what to do. And it's just oh, going to yeah. take from her. Absolutely. So it's it's going to. Transition. And, and Brooke has been scanning the ordinances for the codification projects. There's 300 plus ordinances, and she's already nearly at 200. Okay. So she she worked so hard, and she's going to train this other student to do the same thing. Okay. So we are getting some things. Okay. So you guys are good with going one more intern before we yeah. make a decision. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um. Turnpike over there. What, what's going on with that? Well, at the planning commission meeting, they were given Scott Anderson's review letter. You got that in the last week. Um, I don't know. I, just, I would like to be updated on stuff like this because all of a sudden people start coming up. Hey, what's going on with this warehouse and this restaurant or with the turnpike? And it's like we're the board, yeah, I didn't hear anything and we don't know anything too. about it. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I'd like to be updated on this stuff as it comes in, just so we have a kind of a heads up, because people ask questions, and yeah, I have no idea. Scott usually would give it in an engineer's report. Of course, that's the regular meeting. Right, that's the regular meeting. Yeah. yeah. But nothing. But I mean, this plan's been flying around now for a while. I mean, we're the board of supervisors, and we don't even know anything about. I don't know anything about this. I don't know. If I thought the plan was just. Did the plan just get to you guys this meeting, past meeting? I only saw no. it Paul, Paul gave me a picture of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We need to know what's going on. Yeah. So, so there was a lot of hesitation on that plan because, not I shouldn't say hesitation, a lot of dragging because of uh, legal issues with the turnpike, et cetera, um, boundaries, all, all types of legal issues. So there was a lot of dragging on there. But the proposal is, and don't quote me because I don't remember the square footage, but a small uh, warehouse facility. Oh, and I saw a picture of it, but I okay. had to get it third hand. That's what I'm saying. I'm just saying so, that even if it's preliminary, I think you should still be brought before the board. Well, normally if it goes to planning, then Scott has the information. Yes. And then Scott should bring it up to me and let it give us an update. Once that gets that worked out, then it gets passed on to the supervisors. I don't know why it can't be updated when it comes in. New projects, okay, new something, projects. something coming up. Okay. Don't you get meeting notes? Yes, I agree. Minutes from now? Yeah. We I, do, we yeah. do. But yeah. once again, he heard something hearsay before we got the minutes from the meeting for right. planning, which we won't get till next meeting. Because the plans that I saw, we have an easement that goes in between that property and the church. And I don't know if that's our easement, Keith, or if it's the church's. I don't know. I mean, I, I think that we ought to get something out of that to access 
our property back there. So Did that road used to go right through the carmel ground. <coughs> yes. Yes. Okay. So but I don't know. Is that the, do we, the, way is that the churches, Gary? I think I think the easement still exists. I think the right of way still exists. They're in, looking in favor the of the right? township. Okay. So the township. But yeah, I mean that's the, that's kind of stuff that like we should be apprised to, so we can say, hey, listen, we need access there. Because the print I saw had a guardrail going all around there, and they actually cut off part of the easement right there where it comes out in the site triangle. So I don't. So maybe under the engineer, just put new. I don't know. I have to look through the agenda for this. Well, and they submitted something a while ago. Sketch plan. So this is I get it. This is all preliminary. I know it's got to go through a lot of different stages, but I just when new projects come up, it's pretty bad when the community finds out about it before the board of supervisors. I think that we should be apprised of the stuff when it comes in. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, that's how I feel. Well, we can. Can we just do an attachment to this with this new project listed that doesn't have really any information on it? Just always asking for a different thing than what the agenda would accomplish. It, it, once the application comes in, with the electronic plan stuff, I think it's easy enough just, just to the email. push it out to everybody so that if they want to take a look at the plan and yeah, visualize and what's proposed, <clears throat> just listing it on the agenda will cure that. So well, I know, but it would prompt us to say, oh, it's here, and the plans are always in there. So I, think both, I think both things could, could and probably should be done. So I like to review plans. I like to look at them because, yeah. I mean, Jeff, you can appreciate that being Right. I mean, I, I do that all day, so I like to look at that kind of stuff to see different stuff. So the listing on, on the agenda would help not only the board but the public right. to know what's out there and what's pending. And then we would have access to the plan back on the desk there. As of the meeting, I can tell you as of the meeting, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, th they were under the impression that that easement was to the church. The church owned It was the, the townships. But they are they are they are legally checking into whose easement Who's that is and, and where is it and what is it. So before they do anything, before they submit any kind of final plan or anything like that, um, they are checking into those things. There's a couple of things they check into, that being one of the big ones. And and the state gave them, you know, obviously whether or not they come in and out, not in and out, in, not out, out, not in. You know that the state regulated all that and where they have to do it and whose headache is it going to be for whatever goes along on that property is the state through the turnpike or our police that's department? one of the questions that we have asked it's, it's you have municipal jurisdiction it's, it's in our yeah. township and yeah. well it becomes our jurisdiction correct me if i'm wrong again it becomes our jurisdiction as soon as the new landowner or renter takes over you know what I mean? That it becomes right. our entity. But okay. before that, it was from her right. permission, right. Yeah. state police. But now that there's a Lease. renter long term leasee, that becomes ours. Okay. Okay. So we need an executive. 